Welcome to the show! Welcome! Today we are going to be making some jambalaya, which is a traditional New Orleans dish. French Quarter New Orleans to be specific. So to put us in the mood for some great jambalaya. Get up and take our jambalaya heads. jambalaya music. <laughs> jambalaya. So as you're coming in, let us know where you're coming in from. And if you're coming and you're here live with us, put a one in the comment so you know we're watching what live. And put a three in the comment if you're cooking with us. Yes. So by the way, um, this meal is actually really simple. I know there was a lot of instructions, but most of the instructions were to make three different things. So you could have, I want to show you something here. You can buy from your store, you can buy some Cajun seasoning if you would like, and that would work equally as well. So you could have done that, or you could have made your own, which is what I did here. You can see what that looks like. All right, so you could have made your own, and that was what a bunch of the ingredients were. So this is my own Cajun seasoning. We also made some sausage seasoning, so you can see that here. And uh, the question I have, for those of you who are watching, oh, this smells like sausage, it's great. Yeah, it smells good. I don't know what I turned up, but now is it, is it the song that's talking? Or? I don't know. Oh, it's the song that's talking. Yeah, that's the song that's talking. Oh, yeah, what did you hit? I don't know. You turned on, you turned on my iTunes. Oopsies! <laughs> smells really good. Smells really good. So let us know. Let's uh, read some comments here. Who's joining us? So if you had, t if you didn't have time to make your seasonings, you'll want to make those now. You don't even have to do the sausage one because we're doing the sausage seasoning to replace sausage. This is a meal approved on the Lose It stage of the Vital Life program, which means we only eat one protein at a time. So today, jambalaya traditionally has. Um, sausage, chicken, and shrimp, and we're only going to be using shrimp today. But you could be using some of those other ones. If you're not on our program, you can use them all. Uh, but I wanted to get the other flavor tastes by adding in the sausage seasoning, so that's why we went ahead and made that. And then the other thing is the Worcestershire Sire sauce. Again, um, making your own creates it without sugar and without oil, so that's great for the Lose It stage of the Vital Life program. And uh, really, really simple to put together, but there's instructions on how to do that. Kathleen is on with us. Welcome, Kathleen. And Casey. Welcome, Casey. Chico and Jane are Chico watching. Chico and Jane. Welcome, Chico and Jane. How's your program going, Chico? I know Jane's super excited. I know Jane lost a pound, a whole pound overnight. Congratulations, Jane. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Great surprise this morning. So we have all these laptops here, but OK, uh, Joe Gambino is on. Welcome, Joe. Joe is the Italian chef. And uh, me and him are working on creating our own special sauce. So you'll have to stay tuned stay for that. Tuned for that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah, we people are coming on. They're All hopping right. on. Hopping Let us on. know where you're coming on from. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by getting our riced cauliflower going. So I ended up, this is a little bit closer to two cups of riced cauliflower. You can see the ricing amount. I bought this frozen, it's just about the same price as buying it fresh. Went with organic frozen. Really, really, really cheap and easy to get, and then I don't have to rice it. But if you want to rice it yourself, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can use something like this with a bigger setting, and uh, you can see that. With rice on that, which that takes a lot of time, it but it's, it is doable. Um, you could also food process a head of cauliflower. But honestly, everybody, save yourself some time. Just buy it frozen. It works really well, and it Where stays you good. Um, I got this at Costco, and I got this huge bag of it from Costco and it was not expensive so uh, but you can get it any of your grocery stores will carry this frozen just so you know and you could also get it fresh one of the things I really like about the frozen it, it it's very consistent you see how consistent the sizing is with that you know it's just super consistent with sizing okay people here can see that that's what's really nice when you do it yourself it tends to be a little bit more inconsistent mm -hmm. So you just get a better flavor. So I'm going to start by taking that, and I have my three cups of uh, chicken bone broth. So I'm going to go ahead and add my rice cauliflower into my chicken bone broth, okay, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner on to a medium heat here. Nice. Woo! There was some, did you get some flame action there? That was, that was exciting. Okay, so we got this going, and we're just going to let that cook for a little bit. We want our rice to be cooked. All right. So we, uh, Chico, lost 11.8 pounds. All right, Chico, what day are you on? 11? 
11.8, that is fantastic. Yeah, what day are you on? Let us know, congratulations. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, if you're cooking with me, we're gonna put a splash of the Braggs, because we're gonna do some um, caramelizing. So a splash of the Braggs in a pan, just about that much. If you're not on the loser stage, you can put some oil on here. I would recommend cooking with coconut oil, if you're gonna use an oil. Coconut oil is the most stable oil to cook with. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner on over here um, to a medium heat. And then I'm going to cook up my peppers, so both red and green. They're nicely cut. They are very beautifully cut. Thank you, camera lady. Um, I'm going to also put in my onions. Okay, so this is a about about a medium sweet onion. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Okay. And nice. then my celery. You can see about the size that I chopped the celery here. All right, so about like that. The consistency, again, is important because you want everything cooking around the same, about the same amount of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. Uh, give this a quick mix. Also keeping track of my uh, vegetable broth over there. Basically, I want my rice portion here um, to taste a little bit like, like uh, my rice cauliflower to taste like rice. And then just looking at my ratios, I'm actually gonna, looks like I'm gonna add in a little bit more rice cauliflower. Just judging by what's going on over there. So we have Bonnie's asking cauliflower and we broth. So and then she asked the question, so I don't know what that means. So this is uh, the chicken broth, the chicken bone broth. And we're putting the cauliflower, I'm adding a little bit more cauliflower here. Inside Ooh, the And I'm making a massive mess. This is, this is live cooking people, so just be ready for a mess. Yeah, and Chico's saying he's on day seven. Day seven? Yeah. That's all, let's give some clappy hands for Chico. Some clappy hands and we'll throw up some smiley faces on the, uh, or thumbs yeah. ups or something on our screen there. Do something. That is so fantastic, great job Chico. I know that Chico is also the cook in that, in that household. All right, so I added in probably another cup of cauliflower. So I have about three cups of cauliflower, just, just basing on how much of the other things I have. So I just kind of made a game time decision there to increase that. Um, my, uh, you can thank my sister, Katie Parker. She goes through and she uh, writes the instructions after I cook it. Yeah. Because there is no instructions until this happens, okay? So we are cooking our vegetables. If you have a, uh, the ability to cover Go ahead and cover your vegetables. It's going to create some steam to help cook everything. Turn your burner down to a uh, low medium. So I have mine at a three out of a seven, or a six or seven. Um, and then, once that cooks, then we're going to go ahead and add the garlic in. So we want to get that to be a translucent color. Then we're going to add our garlic. So I have our garlic here, as you can see. And this is about three big cloves of garlic. And we're going to be adding that here once we have translucent vegetables. A couple other things that I have here, if you are working with me, we have um, some uh, green onion, and that's going to be for a topping on the very end as that's well. So good. Everything smells so good. Especially the onion. Parsley. Oh, yeah. And then we have some fresh parsley. These two things are, are just going to be garnishes at the end. Mm -hmm. I also have my yellow squash. That a little bit smaller there. Also, my yellow squash, and then I know a couple people have purchased their own defrosting tray here. So I have this is pre-cooked shrimp, but you could be cooking your shrimp as well, and that's going to go in at the end. Okay, but can this is all pre-cooked. Yeah, maybe we can. We're going to flip our frozen shrimp here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stir in our cauliflower, and let's go ahead and do a taste of our cauliflower. And look at this. I have amazing little baby tasting spoons today. Baby tasting spoons. And we basically want to see if our cauliflower, that you can see here, cauliflower, we want to see if our cauliflower is tastes like rice. Hey, Jane is learning to cook. Jane's Chico learning to cook. says that Jane is helping now and is doing awesome. All right, with Jane. Cooking. Me Jane's too, Jane. Cooking. Can you, can I you know. tell I'm here cooking? You're cooking. So try the cauliflower and tell us what Standing. you think of the cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope you are. Mm. So what's your opinion? I didn't tell her what to say here, so this is 
Well, it's very bland. Very bland. Very good. What else? It needs salt. It needs salt. I don't okay. know like what we're doing well, with it. But... Do you think it needs to be cooked longer? Oh yeah, for sure. There we go. So it's still a little crunchy. It is a right. little bit crunchy. So uh, anybody have an idea of what what could you do to make the cauliflower taste more like rice as far as a seasoning and not salt? Okay, because again, rice is very bland. So not salt. Not salt. What could you do to take to make cauliflower taste more like rice? Let's see if anybody anybody can get that. By the way, if you're joining from our Facebook page, which is this camera here, you need to join our group. We're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at what's happened, what happens here. So if we want to move that camera back so you can see all of the different camera angles we have. All right, so if you join the 20-day the challenge group, we have this camera here. We've got this control panel. We've got this camera. We've got this light. It's a studio. It's a studio. <laughs> yeah, and then my, um, my trailer that I live in for my performances is right out there too. Yes. So nice. Yes. He's got the whole thing, the whole nine the whole yards. Thing. He's yes. got the makeup team. The makeup team. The outfit team. And um, I don't know, what the hell team do you have? Well, I mean, I get, you know, the, the massages every day. I was just going to say, you know, I forgot I am a little bit of a high maintenance celebrity. <laughs> yes. For my 11 followers. Do you have your food taster person? I heard like some people. They're so paranoid when they're Oh yeah, food taste, yes. That they have somebody taste their food well, first. Well, why do you think I have her taste it first? <laughs> Just in case someone slips some poison in here, some hemlock or whatever. <laughs> okay, so my veggies are still cooking. They still need some time. Make sure you stir your riced cauliflower. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. I've got my riced cauliflower at about a five. And if you have a cover, you could probably cover your riced cauliflower as well. Do we not have a cover? I don't think we have a cover. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and add in my... Um, zucchini as well, and my um, garlic. Thank you, the garlic. I knew I was here for a reason. Yes. Actually, let's have let's have Paulina do this part. Oh, what am I doing? Putting in the garlic. Yeah, you're putting in the garlic, and you're putting in that. Is the camera above? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna burn my hair. I'm not doing what Davis does. <laughs> Bad idea. I'll read some comments. Okay. It says, All of the garlic. Uh, all of the garlic, yeah. So, garlic Paulina, you're doing great, Jane says. Okay, Kathleen okay. gave a big laughy face. Again, if you're joining us, give us a hashtag number one. If you're watching live, let us know where you're listening in from. Later on, if you do this as a recording, hashtag number two. Uh, do we have any comments on this one? No comments on that one? Okay. Well, we're doing well. And we have new people coming in and got joining new people daily. people coming in every day on this group. So excited for everybody mm -hmm. to be here. And doesn't that just look beautiful? It sure does. Super beautiful. Is this, um, do I just need to cover it back up? Yep. So once so you get it all mixed in, go ahead and cover it back up. Yeah. So we are, go ahead and give your um, rice a little stir there. And use the same spoon. It's all going to get mixed together here. Oh yeah, so good question. What can we do to make it taste more, more like yeah, rice? Yeah, so did anybody know? Did any, <laughs> any of our listeners know? I only, the only thing that came to my mind is put um, five Chinese spice, spice in there. Well, if you do a five, then it, would, it would make it Asian. Yeah. Right. When All I right. think of rice, I just think of Asian, so I don't know what else. Let's see. We, if we wanted rice to taste more like rice, let me help you out with that one. Rice will taste more like, uh, rice cauliflower will taste more like rice with this ingredient. Let's see if anybody knows here. Uh, oh, Stacy is joining us from Peru, Illinois, and nice. Dorota from Chicago. Welcome. Uh, Mary Welcome. said, it was fun watching both of you cooking tonight. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. Uh, curry, Kathleen Yoder says curry. Uh, Renee just joined us. You know, that's a great question, Kathleen. Curry. Uh, let's see here. Do I have curry? Dave's got two drawers worth of spices. I have a lot of spices, but I don't know if I have curry. He likes to keep expired spices. Like in our pre previous live, you guys know he's got spices from 2014. That's right. You know, you never know when you need them. Curry right. might work. I don't have curry, so that's going to have to go on my list. What? Somebody no. figured out a spice that Davis does not own? Crazy. That's crazy. So here we go. We're going to have, we're going to give the rice another try here. Our rice to cauliflower another try here. We'll have the official taster. 
try this, and then we're going to try it with the secret seasoning on there that will make it taste, I believe, more like rice. Sure thing. All right, so go ahead and try it normal. Okay, what are we at? What, how, how's that tasting? Is that tasting like it's cooked enough? No, not yet. Not yet. So still a little crunchy? Oh, it's crunchy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now taste this to get more rice with the secret sauce on there. Secret seasoning. More rice? Mm -hmm. Rice here? Rice here. Rice here. I mean, rice doesn't taste like much. That's what I was kind of trying to go at. <laughs> right. Rice doesn't taste like much, but right. you want to try to cut some of the cauliflower taste because cauliflower mm -hmm. has a small, small bit of taste to it. Cumin? Is it cumin? It is cumin or cumin or however you pronounce it. I, it's funny afterwards, I always get people like helping me pronounce things like Italian and not Italian and, you know. Italian? Kefir or kefir or kefir. Cumin. Or some people Cumin. say water and I say water. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't. H2O. Some people say tomato and I say potato. Yeah. Guys, it's just a joke. It's quite the other way. I'll be like, wanna eat some potatoes tonight? And he's gonna like give me a salad with t tomatoes. Mm -hmm. No, I want a car. Oh, smell that. Go ahead and smell that. Oh, that smells so good. So what do we got so here? Lenore is online here with us. Welcome, also, Lenore thanks for Juliet. He got smart because he was watching a little bit on Vital Life site, and he's like, I gotta come into the group. Yeah. With better angles. Better angles. Uh, Mary's saying it's fun watching both of you cook tonight. Yay! We thought we'd uh, switch it up. Mix it up a little bit. So we hired a camera crew, lighting crew, industrial sound crew. So I can be here. Yeah. Um. Renee's watching. Yep. Giving right. my rice a little bit of a stir, stirring up our veggies here. We're starting to get, if you look at the onion part, we we're getting translucent with our onion. So you can see here, you can see some of these are starting to get translucent, which is what we're looking for. Mm. And just this without any seasoning smells. Mmm, so good. It doesn't have any seasonings in There's there. There's no seasoning in here yet. Wow. It still smells really, really good. Wow. Okay. Awesome. So this is just mixing around here, mixing this in. I mean, oh, it's yeah, got the garlic. It's starting to smell really good. Starting to smell really good. We want to get uh, the peppers cooked a little bit more, but they're getting close. I've got a. If you look here, this is a rolling boil. So if you ever see instructions say rolling boil, that's exactly what we got going on here. And the rolling boil happens right before the full boil. Okay. Now you can actually see it starting to pick up around the edges with the boil. So we want to keep things stirred and uh, making sure that we don't have anything sticking to the bottom or the sides, like so. And then we're going to reduce our heat just a little bit because we're not really going for a, we're going for a simmer more than a rolling boil right now. So reducing our heat, mixing that, letting some of that heat escape there. Very good. All right, at this point in time, um, I'd love to know how many of you made your own Worcestershire sauce. So can you run us through again, for those who are joining a little bit later in the yes. beginning, uh, I know you've put ingredients to make your Cajun sauce, to make your uh, seasoning, I mean, to make your Worcestershire sauce. Mm -hmm, the word, <laughs> that stuff. I can't pronounce it. And uh, what else was there? Uh, we, did, we, we did a sausage, we did Worcestershire sauce and Cajun seasoning. Right, and you've put all the seasonings that you would have mixed together yes. to create these seasonings. However, um, for people that don't have 20 seasonings or just seems like a lot, they can just get these ingredients. You can just get these ingredients. You can go to the store and buy already mixed sausage um, seasoning, mm -hmm. Cajun seasoning. I actually, right. there's Cajun seasoning, so you can see store-bought versus mine. So just to give you an idea though, um, this cost-wise to do, I mean, if you're really looking to save money, this cost-wise is about half to 75% of one of these, and cost-wise for this is like practically nothing. I mean, we're talking about pennies, where this is probably going to be like four or five dollars. Yeah. So like the investment up front, because you need like five or six seasonings to get, yeah, that you can does... utilize, but then it costs a lot less to right. make your own. So the, the moral of the story is anything that you buy that's pre-mixed is going to be more expensive. You can mix your own. And I also posted in the recommended um, 
products section, I just posted a uh, where you can buy your own jars. Okay, that have the little shaker and the little everything. So you can buy your own jars, and that way you can make your own seasonings and kind of have fun with things and buy yeah. stuff that you like. And by the way, if you make your own seasoning, you're gonna feel it's 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 an accomplishment. You'll actually feel better about yourself as a human being for something as simple as making a seasoning. It's because you're progressing and learning, and it just makes you feel accomplished, which is kind of fun. It's fun. We have Kathleen and Christine both made their own Worcestershire All right. Shire sauce. So Kathleen and Christine, what did you think of your own Worcestershire sauce? And, uh, and Kathleen also made both of the seasonings. Okay, too, so. awesome job, Kathleen. Just giving my veggies a little stir here. So they are getting really close. Oh man, I just had a pepper commit suicide. Help, he's in the flames, he's in the flames. What? Oh, poor it? guy. We want to save him. To oh guy. yeah, we saved out. him. Nice. So yeah, if you if you have the uh, the good views, you got to see that rescue just happen. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, so this is our, if you look at our vegetables here, they're getting really, really close. Something that's kind of fun if you want to try this, you take your... Uh, Italian seasoning and take something that you're cooking here. Ooh, that's hot. Take something that you're cooking here. Mm. I'm going to let it cool for just a second. Cut it in half. There we go. And we'll take our, another one here. I'm going to try once those cool off. And yeah, we'll, get, we'll get one for the um, official taste tester as well. I need like a little Yeah, you need a shirt ribbon. that says official taste tester. Or just a ribbon. So I'm going to turn my heat down to low with my veggies because they are pretty much cooked. We're going to try this right now. And I'm trying the veggie that is most likely not quite done, which is going to be our yellow summer squash. And um, I'd love to know what you ended up putting veggie-wise in your jambalaya. So if you're cooking with me and you can spare a finger, um, go, around, go ahead and type out what you ended up putting in your jambalaya as far as vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got some comments coming in. Com comments coming in. Let's go ahead and so, read those. Um, Christine asked, I like it. Could you use the sauce with the vegetables? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes, you could. Uh, great question, Christine. Yes, you could definitely use that Worcestershire Sire sauce. Anything that calls for Worcestershire Sire sauce, you could use, use that for. And again, make sure you tune in Friday. Um, Good Friday. We're going to be doing fish sous vide style. So excited That's about that. Tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> we're going to be doing fish sous vide style, and we are. It calls for the Worcestershire sauce, so make sure you. For those of you who are still coming in today, yeah. Days, for those of you who have lost track of life. Um, and then Kathleen says, "My daughter-in-law is in." In law is a food scientist. Oh wow! And uh, used to make seasonings for her job. That's so, so I'm awesome. feeling pretty darn good to have my own seasonings. Was that was that Kathleen? That was Kathleen. Yeah. Kathleen, Kathleen, you get an air high five here. And Virtual. Bonnie said, "My new Worcestershire <laughs> sauce with the new Bragg's ACV." Apple cider vinegar. Good. Mm -hmm. um, has arrived today. Nice. It's better than the sauce I made before. Good. Oh, oh, love it, love it, love it. Okay, our um, we're going to try now our um, vegetables. Yeah. So I put some of the sausage seasoning on this one and some of the Cajun seasoning on one. So let's try the sausage first, and we're doing it on the summer squash. This tastes like summer squash sausage. Tastes really good. Tastes really good. Yeah, this is a really like, this is a really good sausage seasoning. Yeah, and then the question is, what makes the sausage seasoning taste like sausage? So there is a specific ingredient that really gives gives it more than the others, gives it a sausage taste. So post if you think you know what it is. Mmm. And that's the Cajun. Mmm, it's got a little kick to it. It's got a little kick to it. It's gonna get more kick to it. Just wait. Oh, there's some more kick. That's this good. is the perfect opportunity to talk to you about Zevia. Our show the has been brought sponsor. to you. Yeah, the official sponsor of our show, for the 15 of you watching, is <laughs> Zevia. No, but uh, actually, we we do now. Uh, Bonnie, we did get the Zevia up on good the call, website. Bonnie. Good call, Bonnie. Way to find out what we didn't have. That's good. Yeah, so we got the, we Zevia, got the Zevia and the Papatia website today. Both, both are up. So. Um, this one is for kids, and uh, it is fizzy apple. No artificial ingredients. 
Um, no dyes, no colors, no artificial sweeteners, no sugar either. It's sweetened with stevia and it's very, very tasty. It comes in these nice little cute cans and if you see here, the coloration is clear and we may have a little fizzy apple going on our shrimp too. That's fun. That's fun. Fizzy apple shrimp, why not? Mmm. Oh, it tastes this is really like good. candy. It does taste I mean, like candy. It this like reminds candy. me of those Jolly Ranchers. Uh, the, the Sour Apple Jolly Rancher. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's good. Do you know another other, another name for a Jolly Rancher? No, is it a really bad joke? It's a happy farmer. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Oh, okay, I have turned off our burners because everything is, is getting ready here. Let's try our cauliflower, make sure that we are the desired softness. Mmm, beautiful. So I feel Paulina try here. Oh, yes. So really we have, hot. I will, there I will go. wait on that for a second. No, you can burn my mouth. It's good, but it's not that good. Rice? Mm. And you see, the, when you cook it, so a little tip here, when you cook your rice cauliflower in um, uh, chicken broth or vegetable broth, it helps get rid of that distinctly cauliflower. cauliflower taste. But you have to cook it until it's soft like it is right now, okay? Um, Bonnie and Stacy are saying fennel and Jane is saying rosemary. It is fennel! Two points for you and two points for And then, for you. Um, great, rosemary would be the second one, I would say, really yeah, gives it the sausage it flavor. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. But yes, it is two fennel. Two points for James. So if you try your, your sausage seasoning and you're like, you're like, it's not quite sausagey enough, add a little bit more fennel mm -hmm. and that will, that will help. Bonnie's saying great and she's going to play some order soon. Okay. Another order soon. Thank you, Bonnie. All right, so now we're going to... We're going to combine everything into our bigger pot here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat on my big pot here. And now we're just going to put everything in the big pot as well as add in our um, tomatoes. Now, these are, anytime I use the diced tomatoes from a can, which that's what these are, I always get the fire roasted. If you look closely, you can actually see the black flakes in there. That's part mm. of the fire roasting process. Um, so you get a little bit of that black flake in there. But like fire roasted tomatoes are excellent and it just adds another level of complexity with the flavors. Just, it just tastes better than just regular tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So we're going to go ahead and add everything into our big pot here. Okay. Um, so. Beautiful. I just wanted to point out that I think this is your first time using that middle, middle burner. This is my first time ever using the middle burner. It's a great middle, middle burner, but I've never used it before. I'm making him use it so you guys can see. So we can, yeah, it's all about camera angles here, people. So, there we go. It's good though. It's great. Get a use out of them. Um, and then by the way, I'm using, you can see copper, 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 copper. Um, there is, in the, I believe in the recommended sections, there is, you can buy a whole set of these on Amazon for like 140 bucks. You get uh, several different size frying pans, you get a big pot, you get a couple soup pots. Um, they're really good. They're really good. And then you can see you can see that this is starting to come together. The jambalaya is starting to come together. We're going to bring this to a um, rolling boil. So right now I have my burner on high once it starts to boil. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn that down. But uh, that's what we got going on We're over there. We're doing so good. We're doing great. This is so easy. How many of you have found this um, easier than you thought it was going to be? Let's ask that question. What, um, so compare, Paulino, did you like the orange creamsicle that we had last night or the green fizzy apple? Well, my favorite flavor is like green apple. Oh, you know so I you love like green, apples, green apple. So definitely this was my favorite. Okay, and there is, which we'll try another time, we do have, whoop, we do have a couple more flavors. 
We haven't even. I, I mean, you have tried these. Like I've before. tried them all. We I have, haven't. This is your first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a fruit punch with Mickey on it, and we have a strawberry lemonade with Minnie on it. Yay! And again, the cute cans. So awesome. Mm hmm. But I like this one. Did you ever hear about the celery and the, and the carrot? No, I don't think I have. You've never heard of the celery and the carrot? Well, they were best friends, the celery and this carrot. Oh, and do, do tell. Do, I will tell. <laughs> and the celery and the carrot, they were, they were, they did everything together. I mean, they were buddies. Um, they, they would go and take peanut butter baths together. I mean, they, they were close. <laughs> peanut butter baths. Of course, peanut butter baths. Oh, yeah. What other types of baths are there? <laughs> I mean, when I turn my shower faucet on, it's either, you know, it's either crunchy or smooth, but it's always peanut butter. You know, have, oh, also, have you heard about the extreme chunky peanut butter? You know, you have like creamy, and then you have chunky, and then you have like extreme chunky, and then you have like super extreme chunky. No, no. It, it's just peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. That was pretty good, guys. Okay. Well, anyway, so back to our story. So, the celery and the carrot. One day, we're walking down the road, and all of a sudden, the carrot got hit by a car. And it got smashed, hit by a car, and just toppled over. And the celery ran over there to the to the carrot and said, "Well, talk to me, speak to me." And the carrot wasn't saying anything. So he picked up his friend, the carrot, and he walked him all the way to the hospital. And he dropped him in the emergency room. And he said, "Doctor, you have to save my friend, the carrot." So the doctor immediately grabbed the friend, his friend, the carrot, and put him on the the gurney and took him back to the ER. And they started operating. And the poor celery, he was pacing back and forth and just didn't know what to do and was so worried. After hours of operating, the doctor came out and the doctor said, uh, you know, your, your friend the carrot, I have, some, I have some good news and some bad news. And the celery said, well, doctor, why don't you go ahead and give me the good news first? He said, well, the good news is your friend the carrot, he's, he's going to make it. That's, that's the good news. <sighs> Celery was so relieved. He's like, oh, that's so good. I'm so happy that he's going to make it. But doctor, what's the bad news? He said, well, although your friend the carrot is going to make it, he's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think you liked my other jokes better today. Uh, your other jokes? What other jokes? What other jokes? I've been cracking jokes this whole time. Just on this live, or like all day today? <laughs> <laughs> Just on this live. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. I like the peanut butter one. The peanut butter one? Yeah, the peanut butter one was good. That was good. Yeah. Okay, we have a boil. This is a this is an intense boil here. If you look at this, this is boiling a little more than we want. So I'm going to kick my heat down to a middle, which we want to bring it to a boil, and then we're going to simmer. Now, the the longer we cook this, the more the flavors are going to meld together. Okay which we want, we want the melted flavors, and then the more the vegetables are going to absorb the moisture, so we get more of that jambalaya-ness to it, because jambalaya doesn't typically have, you know, this much liquid in it, so we're going to be, continue to cook this, and the, the vegetables will absorb a lot of that liquid again, and really absorb the flavor. So going now to a rolling boil, and I'm going to go ahead and add in some of my seasonings now. So we're going to add in the Worcestershire sauce here, so this is the two tablespoons of Worcestershire sour sauce. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And then for the seasoning we made here, we're going to put quite a bit in, but do you understand, like, the Cajun is what adds the kick. It, it's kicky. It's kicky. So um, make sure that you don't overdo the Cajun seasoning. You can seasoning. always add more. You can always add more after it's all said and done. Um, but uh, to start with, we're going to, we're going to add a pretty decent amount. You can see how much I'm adding here. This is how much I made, okay? And I'm gonna add in about a quarter of what I made. Okay? So what do you think that was, teaspoon-wise, my dear? Oh, boy. No, oh, boy. Um, Katie, did you get that? You better put that in writing. Put that yeah, much of it in there. <laughs> I, put, I put about 25% of what I made. Okay. Okay, so Katie, you can do some math there and figure that out. Katie was a, was a teacher, so she's, she can do math. That's great. Um, and then we're going to put in about the same amount of our um, sausage seasoning. You want to just do the... Well, I don't have any clean measuring spoons. Oh, that was the problem. That's the problem. Well, I love... 
can help you. Okay. So hang on. Um, I need. Where's my towel? Oh, where's my towel? The one you wear over yeah, your shoulder. Yeah, the one I wear on my shoulder. Hey, who knows where my towel is? Well, why don't you just grab another one? Ah, uh, another towel. I will grab another towel. Okay. Only have like a drawer full. A drawer full of towels. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add in our sausage seasoning, and this is a tablespoon, and. You know, I'm thinking about a tablespoon looks right. So we're going to start with that. So that's a tablespoon of the um, sausage seasoning, mixing this together nicely here. Let's, let's smell that. All right, oh, we got some yeah. uh, comments. All right. This is a good time to share. Yeah, good time to share. Um, Kathleen is saying, definitely easier than I thought. Yay, Kathleen. Tina is saying, it looks delicious. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it smells delicious too. And Christine is saying, what would the original jambalaya have instead of cauliflower? I have never made it. Oh, great. Who, who is that? Christine. Christine, so original jambalaya is going to have rice. Um, and interestingly enough, it's, it's actually originated in Spain. Jambalaya did. It wasn't called jambalaya, but it was a dish that in the French Quarter of Louisiana they tried to make. But there is a seasoning that they use in the traditional dish that is called saffron, and that was at the time pretty much impossible to find here in the United States. So they substituted, which is an odd substitution, but they substituted tomatoes for saffron. So tomato became the substitute for saffron, which then birthed jambalaya as a traditional French Quarter New Orleans dessert. So it's kind Meal. of a history dessert. Uh, why did I say dessert? Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm feeling some dessert tonight. Ooh, what are we going to have? Stage one approved dessert? Well, we, we will do some desserts, but not... We'll probably do them after our 20-day cooking challenge. We'll uh, yeah. teach you guys how to make some desserts on the uh, Lose It stage. If you program. guys would like to learn how to make some desserts, ha uh, drop down a dessert. Yeah, or, or give us like a, you know, a dessert emoji, like ice cream. Don't give us a poop emoji. <laughs> but maybe like a ice cream emoji would be great, or like a okay. shake or something like that. That'd be great. We did do one. We did that, um, uh, the, the smoothie. The smoothie, yeah. The smoothie was good. So and, um, if you, by the way, if your shrimp aren't cooked, you, you're going to want to put them in to cook right now. And you want the shrimp, you know the shrimp are cooked because they turn pink. These are pre-cooked shrimp, so they're already pink. Okay, so I went, these are the, the same ones that I used for the shrimp cocktail that we did the other day. Um, so these are already pre-cooked, so I didn't need to cook them, but you'd want to put it in right now as well. And then you'll know they're done um, because they're, they're kind of a dark color. They'll turn pink like this when they're done. A couple things about shrimp. Um, these are peeled and deveined. If you have ever made the mistake of not buying peeled and deveined, you will not make that mistake again. <laughs> because you'll sit there and peel and devein all of the shrimp and that's not a fun process. So, right. yeah, at all. Because you have to crack it open, you have to get rid of the shrimp part, and then the devein. This one actually has a little bit of vein left. You can see this here. See that? Does anybody know what the vein is? But you see like most of them don't have that. Does anybody know what the vein is? Um, is it something gross? Hmm? Well, no, you can't answer. We're going to let everybody else answer. Does anybody know what the vein of the shrimp is? Our camera person knows. She has her hand up. And our sound person knows. And the person who tapes down the cords in our studio knows. That's called the gaffer. This... They're all the same person. <laughs> this became a union job. We union job. Call. Everybody's got a job here. All right, so if you're if you're boiling like I am, you need to turn down your heat. Oh. Okay, so I've got mine down to a two, and stirring it there, so we don't uh, we want a more of a simmer now. Simmer down there, simmer down. Okay. Simmer down. Simmer down. Okay. Bonnie's um, saying it smells like real jambalaya. Mm hmm She says she's having the recipes are easy, but trying to keep up while cooking. Trying to keep up with it's commenting. sometimes challenging. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bonnie, you've been doing such a great job. You have been job. doing a great job. Yeah. You honestly have. All of you have been doing the ones that are cooking at the mm -hmm. same time and commenting. Cooking and commenting is difficult. The poop. What, the yes. Poop. Who said the poop? Uh, yes, Christine. Christine. Christine, it is the poop. The vein oh. is the poop. So yeah, you do want to devein. 
Um, or you can eat a little poop. Bon appetit. It is up to you. All right, um, so what I'm gonna do here also with my shrimp is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tails off and I'm gonna cut the shrimp into pieces. All right, so it's kind of like that size. You can see the size pieces. This is pretty traditional as well. You don't have to do this, um, but uh, it's just gonna make my eating experience a little bit better. In the traditional jambalaya, you have shrimp and what yep, else? Yep, traditional jambalaya is, it's shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, it is chicken and it is sausage, but it's a specific sausage, and I can't remember off the top of my head what the type of sausage is, but it is a specific type Anybody of sausage. Anybody knows, let us know. Yeah, or just do a Google search um, of what type of sausage it comes with. Typically though, you know, when you're trying to lose weight and like just overall health, sausage is not a recommended um, meat. Once in a while, no problem. As a treat, no problem, but it is highly processed. Yeah. It typically has nitrates in it, which are a known carcinogen. And even if it doesn't, it has a lot of added sugar, a lot of added preservatives. Um, brown sugar tends to be a really common thing that uh, is in um, your traditional sausages. You can, if you go to a butcher, you can get some sausage made without all that stuff in it. And you're gonna find that it's actually really tasty. You can make your own sausage, or you can just make some meat and put the sausage seasoning on them, which yeah. is what we're doing here. So we are. Um, well, the other the other night when before the ch challenge, when I brought over the meat for my grandma, mm -hmm. you made it taste like yep. sausage. What did we? I was what did so we make? Surprised. We just made because we were making zapakanki. Oh we right, were, we were we made a Polish dish called zapakanki. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody what that is? Since you are zapakanki is. Uh, you take a ba baguette, and the there traditional is. one is that you put in um, on top of it, like you make m mushroom paste. Mm -hmm. So you will make a mushroom paste with onions. I think it was just mushrooms and onions, right? Mm -hmm. And then we made that, and then you put it on on the baguette, and you can put any other toppings on it if you want. But traditionally, you would just cover it with cheese, and then bake it for like a few minutes. And, and we didn't have any sausage, so... And we, and yeah, and we, yeah. Oh, you put ham, like the traditional way is ham. Mm -hmm. But we're like, okay, we didn't have any sausage or ham, so we used uh, the pork that we had, and Davis made it taste just like sausage. It was really awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, Carmen, welcome. Thanks for joining us, Carmen. Um, Lenore and Renee both say it's andouille sausage. Andouille sausage. Ooh. Andouille sausage, that's right. Andouille, andou, andou sausage. Don't know how to pronounce that either, but I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. Andouli, 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 Andouli. I pronounced it right one of those times, I'm sure. Well, how since you pronounced it both ways, she can't really let us know which way is right. <laughs> it's alright, I'm going to pronounce it Andouli, because that's how I think it is. And uh, Nina's asking, what if you're using chicken? Just uh, cube and throw it in? Cube and throw it in, yep. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in right now. It's already cooked, so this is just going to serve as... Um, heating it up. Could you please, could could we please see a shot of what yours looks like? Yes. Is that's from our page right here? This is what we got going on right now. Okay, this is what mine looks like. So here's the. Does anybody know? Like we we still have quite a bit of liquid here. How do we get rid of the liquid? Drink it. Drink it. That's one option. All right, how do we get rid of the liquid? We got extra liquid, it's a little too liquidy. What do we do? Um, I don't know. You know? Well, let's, you just... let's, let's wait to listen to some people. So some people tell us. Okay. What do you do if you have too much liquid in a dish? And again, the last things we're putting on here, we've got our um, parsley and our green onion that's gonna be serve as a garnish and a topper for our um, jambalaya. And we're almost done, yeah? And we're almost done. So we're gonna see, nice. did anybody, anybody tell us? We're a little uh, behind. Anjui, Anjui is Bonnie. Anjui. Could we please see a shot? Yes, we can. Thanks, I was afraid mine was too liquidy. So Kathleen's probably looks just like mine. With lots of liquid. With lots of liquid. Yours mm -hmm. is not too liquidy, you're actually doing well. Um, let's, we're, we're gonna go ahead and try this right now. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of our, of our liquid and our water here together. Smell that, it smells really good. 
blow on it because it's really hot. It's very good. Excellent. 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 So the only thing we're waiting is how can we get a liquid? How can we get rid of the liquid? How can you get rid of this excess liquid? I say drink it, but you know. Paulina says drink it. That is a option. You could drink it. That would get rid of the extra liquid. Let's see here. Christine says mine looks mushy. Renee says drain it off. Um, Mary says strain it. Um, Ooh, it's spicy. Woo! Love it. Leave off top, cook medium heat, says Carmen. Um, Christine says mine looks mushy. So um, you jambalaya tends to, do, it does kind of look a little pasty mushy. So if yours look is looking pasty mushy, that's probably a good thing. The other thing that could be a possibility with that is if your riced cauliflower is really small. If your riced cauliflower is really small, it can kind of turn more into a paste. So you could end up with some mush that way. Um, so Carmen said that if you cook it uncovered, it will help. And she's actually right. So this is a concept called, you could strain off liquid, but you're straining off flavor if you do that. All right, so if you strain it off, you're gonna strain off the flavor. If you drink it, kind of do the same thing. Um, and it'll be delicious. You, you, could, you, you could, to serve it right now, if you wanted to serve it, you could use a slotted spoon. That's gonna get rid of some of the liquid, but what's gonna make this even better is if we let it sit and simmer, like Carmen said, with the lid off, um, and every once in a while, giving it a stir, it's going to reduce. And by reducing, it's actually going to enhance the flavor and it's going to be even better, all right? So all of, our, all of our bites will be even better. At this point in time though, go ahead and let your simmer to the desired thickness. I will make sure to photograph ours when we're all said and done. But I would say, based upon how, how liquidy mine is, we're probably looking at another 20 to 30 minutes of simmering, okay? So what I would recommend is take some time, clean up the mess that you made in your kitchen, as I clean up the mess I made in mine, and, um, Stir occasionally so you don't burn. Make sure you're monitoring the heat. And uh, then we'll uh, enjoy some jambalaya together. Let's see if we had any, any other comments there. Okay, looks like we are. Any, anything going on here? Great, okay. So um, thank you guys all for joining me. And I look forward to tomorrow. Remember to tune in around the noon time. I will again post at what time we'll be going live for your daily dose of Davis, your midday inspirational time. And uh, we are working on uncovering blind spots. Ooh, so, I love that stuff. She loves that stuff. Yeah, she just loves saying, hey, look at all these blind spots that you have. That's her <laughs> favorite part. Uh, but anyway, we'll be working on uncovering blind spots. Make sure that you take a nice picture of your dish tonight and post it as you have been doing so faithfully. And also take some time to, to introduce yourself to some of the new members that come in because they don't have a clue what's going on. So they need to be caught up to speed, let yeah. them know how to participate. And although they may not be able to win any prizes, it, the win is the education. Yeah, exactly. The and this is, is a busy education. group. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going so on. So if you guys have questions, ask. Yeah. The new people especially. If you're like, what is this crazy people in a crazy group? Just ask. Just ask. We're happy to help. Everybody's we happy like to help. To, yeah. to cook along with us and make some delicious meals. Yeah. You'd be uh, cooking while in quarantine. So what, um, just really quick. Are we gonna see where people are at? Like, who's winning? Who's doing the winning? We can probably announce like announce the top five like tomorrow. Are you, all right, we're gonna do that tomorrow at noon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me talk to I the. I can get a list. Let, let me talk to the scorekeeper. So, do you think we'll be able to get a list for our people tomorrow? According to my calculations, yes. Okay, so we can. <laughs> so tomorrow at noon, we will also give a scoring update. Yeah. We have several different prizes. Almost here. To the almost finish there. line of our twenty-day. But maybe we have we have days after that we're doing it. Like yeah, this, exactly. It's the 18th that this ends. Yes. The challenge yes. ends on the 18th. The cooking ends soon. We were... <laughs> we forget. <laughs> I didn't even know tomorrow was Friday. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll be giving things. you a few more days extra for those of you with leftovers and you just need to catch up on all the dishes. Uh, you'll have, like, I think five or seven days. It's five days or Extra so. yeah. to, uh, to just make up those meals yeah. if you are uh, participating in a challenge. Sweet deal, everyone. Okay, guys. Thank well, thank you. you, everybody, for joining. My name is Davis, and this is Paulina, and we want to remind you to live a vital life. Live a vital life.